Hey guys and welcome to this video on the C Sharp programming language. So in this video I'm going to show you guys how to create a, a uh, Windows desktop application all right, using C Sharp and Visual Studio. So what we're going to create is something like this here, what I've already created bef before. Um, and you can see that it has a title called Greetings. And it says select the message option. So we can select goodbye and then click display. And then it displays a uh, a message box that says goodbye. Or I can click hello and then click display. And it will display a message box saying hello. All right. And so this is a standalone executable file. And I'm going to show you guys how to create this all the way from scratch yourself. And I actually got this from a guide online of how to create this so uh, I put that in the link below so you guys can see that yourself but alright for now let's go ahead and get started with this first thing that we're gonna do is go to file here click new and then project alright and what we're gonna create is what's called a WPF app file so that's under templates here under visual C sharp so that's what we're going to be using here, C Sharp, for this. And then you can see that it gives it a default name, WPF App 4. That's because I have uh, four other projects already named WPF App. And then the solution will also be the same name as our project. All right. And it's going to create a directory for our solution. So let's go ahead and click OK and then allow it to create our uh, new project here. All right. So it looks like it's loaded up now. And what we have here is basically our design. This is uh, what the this is the window here that we're going to be creating. And on this other tab up here, where it says main window dot uh, this is where we have our C sharp code and where we're going to do some of the logic, which is uh you know clicking the button basically will be the only logic that we use here. So let's uh let's take a look at this here first thing we want to do is probably rename the window to greetings so to do that we just click a lot like not right here but at the top and you can see this properties um, opens up for this window and what what we can do is we can change the title here to greetings or we can go down here which is our XAML code and we can also see that the title is main menu. I'm sorry, main window, not main menu. And we can also change it here as well. All right, so I'm just going to change it from here and make it greetings and then press enter. And you can see that the window changed um, to greetings. All right, so now we're going to go over here to the left. Now I'm going to go to toolbox and click on that. And then what you can see is some of our controls that we have. And these are the controls that I'm going to use. We're going to need a label. Uh, we're going to need radio buttons. And we're going to need a uh, a button control. Let's see. And here it is, the button. So let's take another look at our, uh, our the application that we want to create. All right. So again, this will be the label. Uh, these are our two radio buttons. And then uh, this right here is our our uh, just normal button okay so first thing I'm going to do is drag over the label so I'm just going to click label here and just drag it on over no problem there and let's go back to the toolbox and we're going to get the uh, radio button and drag it on over here and I'm going to get another radio button and drag it on over here and then we just want a normal button and I'll put it down here. All right. And now let's, let's kind of make it uh make it look a little bit better, right? In the layout. So I'm going to move this over. I want to see make sure that the uh, radio button that they both are basically on the same line. And I can do that just by clicking it and I can drag it uh left, right, up, down, wherever I want to on this layout, but it look like it's on the same Oops, now it looks like it's on the same uh, plane as the other radio button. And I'm just going to click this button here and move it around as well. 
to kind of get in the middle there. But we might have to change this again when we change this label here. So now we have a, a layout that looks pretty similar to what I have here. Select a message option. Um, but uh, the names are are different. So let's go ahead and change those. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this label. So I'm just going to click on label here. And to the right, you'll see under properties, uh, the content says label. So we're just going to change that to select a message option and then press enter all right and that changes our label and I'm gonna move that on over make it look a little bit better again um, and let's click it again you can see here that it doesn't look exactly the same this right here looks a lot bigger and maybe a different font so let's go ahead and change that so make sure that the the labels clicked and we can go to text and then maybe I want to make the text uh, maybe I want to make it look, look like that and change the size to maybe 18 uh, let's go with 20 alright and now let's um, move it around again make it look a little bit better okay so now we have our select a message option uh, label. So now we're just going to click on this left radio button here and again go to the properties. So now it's for the radio button and we go to content to change the name. So I'm going to make it hello and I'm going to click on the other radio button and go to its content and change it to uh, goodbye and press enter. All right. And now I'm going to click on button here, go all the way to its content, and I'm going to rename this display, and then press enter. And now, also again, as I'm doing all these property changes, you'll see down here in the XAML that the content here is also changing. So we have our uh, select the message option here, we have hello uh, for our radio button, goodbye for our right radio button, and then display for our uh, just normal button. So let me go, let me show you guys that I can I can click in here and it says hello. I can put exclamation mark, and you can see in here um, that that content gets updated with an exclamation mark and same here on the right under properties. So let's go ahead and just get rid of that. All right. So right now our uh, our uh, code here or our design looks pretty good so now let's actually do some actions with this button when we click it and what we can do is again here we have our .cs class which is called main window .zemo .cs. so I'm gonna click in here and this is where we're gonna do all the logic for when we click the button and uh, what we can do is which is kinda cool is we can just double click this button here so let's take a look at this class really quick so you'll see that this is how it is without this this action uh, that this button is about to uh, uh, without this method that us double clicking the button is going to do so let's double click display alright and it automatically opens up our main window.zemo.cs file and it included this method here which is the action that we're going to use for the button. All right. Now let's see. What we're going to do is an if statement here. So I'm going to say if uh, radio button one dot is checked equals equals true, then we're going to uh, show the message box. So we're going to say message message box dot show. And what we want it to show is hello. And then semicolon. All right. Uh, but you'll notice something here. You'll notice that we have this little red squiggly line here saying that it's an error. The name radio button 
button one does not exist in the current context. That's because we never told it what radio button one is. So let's go ahead and go back to our design and let's let's tell it that uh, uh, which one of these radio buttons we want it to be and uh, give these radio buttons that name. So anytime we click hello, we want hello to be the uh, the message box that's displayed or shown. So I just called it radio button one here. I'm going to copy it, go back to our design, click on we're going to click on hello and up here on the right of properties you'll see where it says name it has no name we're going to put radio button one so now this radio button can be used in the code as radio button one so let's go back to our CS code and the swiggle oh, let me uh let me save this as well so I'm just going to do control s now let's go back to our CS here and we see that the swiggly line is gone. We no longer have that error. So we're good to go. And I guess while we're at it, I could go back here and uh, go ahead and create the name for the other button. But uh, we'll do that after I create this. So here's going to put a little else statement. All right. So let's see. Yep. So I, I guess I could say. Hmm. Okay. So let, let's think about this for a second. If radio button one is checked equals true, then we're going to display this message box. All right. Now, else, let's do else if. Else if. Uh, radio button two dot is checked equals equals true then we're going to display uh, goodbye all right and now I'm going to go ahead and give our other radio button the name of radio button 2 by clicking on it. Going here, it's going to paste it, radio button 2. And I'm going to save this by doing control S. And now let's go back to our CS. All right, and we can see that the error message is gone. All right, so now this is looking more like what we had here from our previous example. Um, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to move this over a little bit more just to make it look a little bit better. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and run this just by clicking the Start button here. All right, and it's running it. Perfect. So no errors. All right, so here we have the um, the executable here, or well, it's not really the executable. This is us running the program. Uh, let's see. Click hello. Click display, and it comes up with hello. And then click goodbye. Click display, and it comes up with goodbye, just like we want it. So that's perfect. Let's exit that. And now let's go ahead and create that executable file, that uh, executable file of this this program that we just created. So I'm um, going to click on Build up here, and then oh, click Build, and we're going to click Build Solution. Okay, and let's see down here it says Build uh, zero succeeded zero failed one up to date. Okay. So now, wherever we save this project at, that's where we have to go. So I already have that here. Uh, this is where I saved my projects. Uh, right now, we're in the WPF App 4 project. So I'm going to click that. Then we're going to click uh, WPF App 4. And then under Bin, uh, Debug. And now we see our WPF App 4 executable file. 
and I could just double click that and there we go we have our we have our desktop app so that's basically it guys um, if you uh, don't have Visual Studio installed I'll be sure to put a link to that video that I have so you can install Visual Studio uh, 2017 and I hope you guys really enjoyed it I think C Sharp is pretty cool so far so thanks for watching guys and please leave likes comments questions don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys all in the next video